So check this out. For the past five years, I've been traveling the world, making fire beats, shutting down parties everywhere, capturing content, and connecting with other creatives day in and day out. It's been the most invigorating, complicated, stressful, and fulfilling journey I could imagine. And honestly, I'm just getting started. See, I found my passion and purpose through becoming a creative, and now my goal is to connect with other creatives, but on a deeper level. What drives you? What's your starter from the bottom story? You know, forget the glitz and glamour and likes and comments. I want to see what you're made of. Let's talk business. Let's talk content. Let's talk passion. I'm DJ65, and these are the Passionate Creatives. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Passionate Creatives. I'm your host, 65. Today we got a very special guest. Mr. Kenny did that, Mr. Uh, Kendall Chambers, Mr. 6'8, yeah. okay. Mr. Stretch, <laughs> Mr. Kenny did that, Mr. Henny Kenny. How many how many nicknames, nicknames you got, my guy? I got like five or six. Did I hit them all? Yeah. You hit them Stretch. All. Six eight. Stretch six eight. Kenny did that. Henny Kenny. Henny Kenny. Oh, God. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> stretch. I think we said. You already said stretch. Uh KC. Yeah. Okay. That's all. That's a, okay. Welcome to the show, Kendall. Um, this man has been very active in the KC community yeah. um, through dancing, culture influencing, and as of late, photography, man. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. we're glad to have you. And uh, for those of you that are just tuning in, what we're doing with this podcast is I'm on a mission to interview 100 creatives, okay? okay. And um, I want to dig deeper than the surface. So people often get caught up in the content, the likes, right. the comments, all that stuff yeah. that we see on Instagram, etc. Right, right. But my purpose with this is to dig deeper and let people tell their stories, um, what drives them, any mm -hmm. mindset hacks, and basically just using this as a platform to um, influence and educate other creatives. So um, you in particular have been busy these past few yeah. months. What's what you been up to, my man? I just been, you know, just keeping up, getting with you know, getting with different people, trying to get some shoots done. Mm -hmm. uh, just networking outside of Kansas City, whether nice. it might be in Dallas or you know, in, in Houston or wherever. So I'm just trying to get different things going versus just taking the same kind of photo. Yeah. What? Um, why Texas? Uh, I got a couple friends that live out there. I got okay. a homeboy that actually works for an airline company, so really, he just you know, gets me there with a little ease, you uh -huh. know, the way. So that's yeah. all I'm gonna say on now. <laughs> <laughs> and your brother, you said recently moved there. Yeah, my, re yeah. my brother recently moved out for a job. So mm -hmm. that's I got I got family in Texas. I got friends in Texas, and they got connections with people in Texas. Uh -huh. So it's like, okay, might as well see who I can meet to shoot with in Texas. Definitely. Is that looking like a future move for you, maybe, or are you still kind of? If I could choose, yeah, I'd move and take. Oh, boy, shit, Dallas got a lot. Dallas has a lot. This Dallas, is true. I, yeah, Dallas and Houston. Yeah, what's your um, what's your quarantine experience been like? Cause I know um, it's been crazy for a lot of people. Yeah. You know. So okay, <laughs> when they first started, the, when they when the first thing came out, I think it was late late March. Mm hmm. March 19th, I flew to Dallas. Really? Because you knew what was coming? I mean, I already was planning on going somewhere for spring break. Okay. And then we had planned South Padre or just? Well, no, we was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. <laughs> we planned on going to <laughs> Miami. And then Florida done blew up with all the stuff. We was like, ah, can't go there. So we just went to Dallas. Uh -huh. And then from there, it was like, okay, not too much is going on. We had Airbnb. It was fun. Blah, blah, blah. Right. But I was there that whole week until the Tuesday when it started the stay at home order. Right. So, I mean, I got shots done out there. So it basically, you went at the perfect time. Right. Yeah. Were you um, still, are you, were you working at Best Buy throughout this? Um, For the whole quarantine? Yeah. Okay. Working there. And uh, you recently left. Right. What was that, what was that transition like for you? Um, it was actually a smooth transition for me, to be honest with you. Yeah. It gave me a lot more time to, to be on myself versus having to go into a, a, a corporation, you know, and, with all quarantine and stuff, I was just answering phones all day. I wasn't mm. doing nothing with the camera. No right, way. right. And to now have time to really be able to put more time towards the craft and towards myself and to emerge both, I mean, I feel a lot more healthier, not just, you know, by mentally, but physically as well. Because mm -hmm. now, you know, getting a little gym, getting a little workout. For sure. Feel, you see what I'm saying? I feel you. I feel, feel you. Slow team. You know, boom. <laughs> I mean, you know, 
I love hearing that. So were you doing any planning, like financial goal setting, stuff like that when you were thinking about leaving? Or was it just kind of like, you know what, I'm ready to bounce? It was more like just on that, on that, on that set of terms, but also like with COVID and everything going on, there was some things that with that being mm-hmm. set within there. So that made me that had me to leave as well. Yeah. But it's like with any type of setback, there's some type of comeback. Straight up. And there's some sort of balance within that. Yeah, you might have, you know, an L, but there's some sort of W you have to look within Straight that. Up. And that's where the I've been shooting way more this month than I have in the past three, four months. That's crazy. Yeah, you how many photos have you taken, man, in the past thirty days? Photos or photo shoots? Photos. A lot. At least like fifteen. Oh, not fifteen. Two thousand. Two thousand photos. Yeah. Damn. Roughly, I'm mean, active. When I was at, when I shot or that was at least five hundred pictures. Five hundred photos in a night. Yeah. Damn. Well, I got some. I got some st- events coming up soon, so you might have to slide yeah. through. You know. That's the that's the move, man. I'm yeah. trying any type of event coming up. I'm trying to be there. I'm it's a to pool get... party. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. This Saturday. At one light. <laughs> huh? This Saturday? Huh? Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Huh? This at Saturday one? at one light, 12 o'clock, 12, 12? 12 to 3. It's supposed to be, to, yeah, 12 to 3, but I'm going to play like probably to 12 to 3.30 or so, just because I like to have fun. Bet. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Come through with that cam band. Oh. Yeah. So check me out. I got some friends coming in town. Okay. From the a homie from Dallas that you know okay. they get the going, you know what I'm saying? And then his brother <laughs> from <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then his brother is gonna be in town this weekend. Okay. And I'm really wanna show him a good time. So that is Come through. What? Yes. Twelve to three. One light pool. Get it popping. Yeah. Get it popping. You feel I ain't me? been no one light the one light pool. I'm thinking two light, okay. The two That's light pool is tiny. It is. It's like the city. It's like the city front one that overlooks the yeah, yeah. Uh, live block. It just looked nice from yeah, outside. Yeah, it does. Oopsie, yeah. How are we doing on battery? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I've been doing these real raw and cut. You know, not too much editing. So whatever extra stuff that happens within, you know, birds chirping outside, kids running around, it's going in there. Huh? <laughs> but anyways, yeah. take us back to the early stages, man. What was your childhood like? What were some of your early interests? Honestly, bro, I grew up playing sports. What sports? Basketball. I was pushing the basketball like none other. But I mean, six. I'm like when I'm six eight now, right? Uh-huh. When I was six, seven, eight years old, I was five foot up. At age seven? Yeah, I was tall. I was like five three. So five, you've been a tree your whole Yeah, life. I've been tall. So if you a tall little kid and you just you look big, uh-huh. you can run the court. Coach, they're gonna put you in. They're yeah. gonna put you in. They don't care how good you are. Right. So. Out there. I grew up thinking that, okay, I just got to do this, and it, and it comes to it, mm-hmm. right? I mean, in high school, I didn't really play varsity sports. I was on the team, but I didn't play because I didn't have that type of, that push like that. I didn't okay. think on that on that same way like other pe- other kids did. Because I, like, I yeah. had some sort of advantage as being taught. Right. So, you didn't put that extra effort in. Right. I, and I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, in high school, I'm getting all these letters. I got a box, a shoe, a shoe box full of letters from colleges saying, oh, we want you to come, in and come visit this and that. They don't know me. They didn't see me on the roster. 6'5", 11th grade, 210 pounds. It looked nice. Yeah, right. It, it looked nice, nice but you don't think. Yeah. So I think that whole failure of not really getting that, that extra step like my older brother did in football, my younger brother did in baseball, mm-hmm. and me not getting that, that, that step like that, that kind of pushed me to really get this going. And excel with something else. Right. I would say that's the same for me. Um, you know, I had my knee injury that stopped me playing at JCC. And um, I told myself, like, I'm going to be good at something. Right. You know, I know I got it within me. I know I'm a lion at heart. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be great at something. So right. I've been able to apply that to DJing and just being a creative in general. So that's been a, that's been a blessing. You know what's also crazy is we both have the same injury. ACL, right yeah. knee. Yeah. Yep. And I remember, unfortunately, when it had happened, I felt it in my leg. When did it, when did you tell yourself? 2009, October. Okay. It was a football game. Oh, you played football too? Yeah. I played DN, and I was going around the corner and smacked my knee, and I went in, so that was bad. There's, there's so many injuries in football. It's like, 
especially for us tall guys, it's kind yeah. of hard to escape, you know, because everybody's going low, you yeah. know. It's going to happen. It's going to happen at some point. But when did you get into uh, into dancing? What was that? Dancing. What age was this around? Okay, I was 12 years old. Was I 12 years old? Was this during the Soldier Boy times? No, yeah, no. It was before. Ah, smack boy. Yeah, YouTube, you know? YouTube so, got a lot of people dancing. I was in the eighth grade. What was that? 2006. Uh-huh. So I was... 13, okay. 12, 13, I saw a kid dancing in the in the uh in the lunchroom. He was gliding doing his Chris Brown stuff. Uh-huh. All the honeys was on. I'm like, bro, that's dope. So I go on, my had my PSP uh-huh. PlayStation. Yeah. You know, and I was one of the few that I remember you could connect that to Wi-Fi. Okay. So I'm up there watching Omarion and Chris Brown, you know, all day. All night after school, you were Why, hooked. Yeah, slow motion it, trying to see how they doing the footwork, uh-huh. how they popping, like what's what's that technique? Right. I would practice until I saw what that was. I see. And then I kept doing that from seventh and eighth grade and ninth grade. And then I remember it was a it was a freshman mixer at Rockers. I went to Rockers my freshman year. Okay. It was a mixer, and some it was a big old circle. And this dude, this senior dude, was cutting up. Yeah. Dude was nice. Yeah. Dude was nice. I know I'm gonna get cut up if I jump in the circle, but you know. And this is when I had my big South Pole, big hat, oh, on, yeah. big jeans, <laughs> Air Force Ones. I was feeling myself. Hell yeah. I go in there. Somebody pushed me in the circle. AO Technology by Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Yep. I don't know why I remember this, but yeah. this is when I got embarrassed. But I did it. And from that moment forward, oh snap! That's when the it whole took dance. Off. Yeah. Somebody pushed me in a circle, and I'm like, oh, snap, I'm okay, here. Okay, I'm just going, I'm just going, fuck, do something to yeah. him. I'm going to do something to him. I'm going to do something. What was the reaction like? Uh, it was lit? Yeah, I was sweating. Yeah. <laughs> I was sweating. I was sweating. Was, was the crowd sweating. hyping you up? Everybody was Yeah, like, everybody was hyping me up. Everybody was quiet, though. I didn't know what was going on. Because yeah. when I got done, dude came back and cut it up. The so same I, guy? Cl- yeah, clearly I was forgotten. <laughs> Clearly, I was forgotten. So that just uh, kind of transitioned, and uh, you've been dancing since. What is it about dancing that makes you uh, just come alive? I mean, because I didn't see you in many parties. I'm like, hey, come on, come. On. You, you already know. <laughs> I'm the tallest one in everywhere I go. I'm not mm. gonna be. A, I'm not gonna be a wall hugger. Yeah. I'm not gonna be standing on the wall. I'm not gonna be looking lost. Right. I'm gonna be in there. You are gonna see me? Okay. You are gonna see me? Yeah. I'm going to be somewhere with, you know, a drink. I might have a whistle. I might have something going right. on. Me you dancing see me. in the middle. I love so that. So that's the point. That's, that's, and everybody has fun. You know, it might be dead. Let me, let me, let me bring some life to it. You know mm-hmm. I mean? For so. sure. So what inspired you to get into photography? Because so, that actually picked up recently, like maybe like three, year, three, three years ago. Yeah. Okay. And time flies. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened with that? Um, I was shooting with my friend Alex. She had a she, her dad's camera. Uh, it was like a Nikon D6 or D5. It was a nice camera. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was doing, but it was taking some pretty good photos. You know, take it back. To, you know, she would take it back, and I'm using my phone. Mm-hmm. Those would actually turn out really well, but I'm using my phone. Everybody's at that. Something that's been at that phase. Yep. And it's like, Quan had bought a camera. Shout out Quan Chi. Shout out to Quan Chi. Hey. People don't realize, Quan put me on the camera. Let's go. All right? That's, that's really one of the main reasons as to how I am shooting is because of Quan. So, shout out to you, bro. Shout out Quan Chi. And uh, A1 for helping a lot of shit out, bro. Shout out A1. Yes, my guy. So, Quan had bought the camera, and he bought it with the intent of, man, I'm not going to really go to somebody else to take our photos, so I'm going to get it. Mm-hmm. He ain't know what the camera do. Where he bought it though, just on off the rip. Yeah. So during the two trail events. Yeah, yeah. During all the two trail or, thing. I think he, that was one of also the, the thought process with that too. Um, so are you guys still doing two trail events, or is it just like? Yeah, it's um. Uh, I never that, had me come out to DJ, man. What? What? what, man, what that's, the, that's all him. Okay. Uh, that's. You okay. know, that's a, yeah, that's yeah, another. That's interview. all him. That's I ain't, another I ain't the one to talk about on that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, when he got the camera. It was just like, okay, let me just take some pictures of you guys here back and forth. But I didn't think nothing of it again. Mm-hmm. Until I go to Florida and visit my cousin. What city? Uh, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. He was 17 at the time doing a music video, dropping like Hit Charlie. 
to charge like two grand dollars for it. Mm-hmm. That's unheard of to me at the time because I was just meeting him. Right. When he came back from doing a music video, I'm like, okay, his mama hyping him up. I see what he just did. <laughs> I see his little <laughs> list that he got going on. Shot you know? list. Yeah. I think I remember you telling me about this. So I'm like, okay, he's got a clothing brand. He's got cards. He's got clientele. Oh, it's a business, bro. And then I went on Instagram and see my boy Cam. Shout out to Cam. Super duper Cam. Nice. Shout out Cam. <laughs> um, he was doing pictures as well. So I'm like, okay, everybody around me shooting. There's a camera at home. As soon as I get back, I hit Quan. I'm like, let me borrow that. Let thing. me borrow that. So I go out to downtown. Uh, Lee Summit take some pictures. Uh, they really are uh, just stuff. Random stuff. Just now, were you thinking um, about making money with it, or are you thinking just, nah, I want to? I want to learn. Now nah, I just want to shoot. I just want to get out and get some stuff. I just want to take pictures. For sure. I just wanted to see what I could create. Right. Based off of what I've seen in magazines or whatever, just yeah, making it look good. You got a very, very um, creative and uh, keen mind. You know, we're gonna touch base on that in a little bit. But go ahead, with your story. Um, after me shooting downtown, I hit up some friends because I got tired of shooting just stuff. Mm-hmm. I wanted to shoot people right. and what that could do. Who's the first person? Fonzo, Lafonzo, uh, M- McKinnis, I think that was his name. Junior, yeah, my boy. I worked with him at uh, at Foot Locker. Shout out to Fonzo. Man. Shout out to Fonzo. Was he was one of the first people to to actually link up with me. Yeah, and I think that's really what. Cause I, I got done shooting that day. My boy Cameron came out with his brother Kevon, and we just kind of all created in what in, in Crossroads, I believe it was. Okay. It was uh, I mean, I was using some really funky apps to edit, but you know, <laughs> gotta start somewhere. Yeah, and yeah. that's when that day is when I learned about Lightroom. That's when I learned about Adobe. That's when, mm-hmm. and it was just people walking by just telling me this stuff. You really? Know? Yeah. It wasn't people that was the KC community is very um. <clears throat> Very helpful. Yeah. I know I've learned a lot just from other people just dropping gems on me. Yeah. yeah. So from that point forward was just like, okay, let me, I put it out. I put like three pictures out from that night. People saw and they liked it. Mm-hmm. People were like, oh, and I just kept doing it a little bit more. Hit some other people up. And it's kind of snowballed effect. Just more too. and more. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay. Every person I shoot, something is different. But it's fun. Let me keep doing this. Right. And it's very it. fun when you're just getting started. Yeah. You, know? you want to just keep trying new things. You see, the inspiration is everywhere. Right. You know. Quick gem for y'all. Make sure y'all taking notes because we dropping gems all this, all throughout this whole podcast. Inspiration is everywhere. You just gotta be looking in the right places. You know, whether that be Instagram. Follow some accounts of people who are doing cool stuff. Don't, just stop looking at ass and titties and these people who got fake money. Look for inspiration, um, things that are going to inspire you to be great and be better at your craft. So, back to your uh, progression as a photographer. That was smooth right there. (laughs) That's what I do, man. That's what I do. (laughs) Passionate creators, baby. We live with my man, Stretch. Kenny did that. Anything is possible. All the nicknames. (laughs) So, after your first photo shoots, um, you're getting traction. People liking it on social media. When did you decide to be like... Let me start making some money with this. It was like two months later. Two months later. After getting started. What was your first prices looking like? $50 for an hour doing whatever. I was trying to get you like, it was yeah, $50 an hour mm-hmm. or an hour and a half. And you would get the photos the next day. I think I was offering like 10, 10 15 pictures for it. Okay. So I was giving... What were, you, what were you using the market? Like just DMing people or just yeah, posting it? Just DM, posting, send them out, um, send, texting them to people, Facebook, mm-hmm. um, Snapchat. Um, I was doing a lot of different ways. I but love it. See, at the time being, I had uh, got let, I got laid off at state at my job that I was working at at the time, mm-hmm. which was a, a warehouse. So I was like, okay. I got this camera and figure this out. Yeah. At the time, in between me not working there and getting on the Best Buy, I had got onto a wedding. I had got like six or seven shoots underneath my belt. Mm-hmm. So I was starting to get somewhere with something. This is where I was going yeah. with it. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of. Some, and like you were saying, with the L, there always comes a W. Right. You know, so you being laid off, you probably, if you didn't, who knows if you would have went as hard as far as your right. photography goes. I know for me, um, my senior year when I was at, at working at Cerner and finishing up school, I was hustling, man. Like, weekends, shooting videos, just hustling. 
Yeah, you was doing, you was that, you was DJing. Yeah, everything. every every weekend was busy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, I knew, it, like, as soon as I left there, I started the, at the start of 2018. I was like, okay, I don't have that to, to rely on anymore. Right. You know, it's funny. Funny story is. They offered me a position to stay with the company, and I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna take it right now. I can't give you a definite because I I wanted to go to Atlanta, be an actor. Yeah. Um, I was dabbling in LA. Mm -hmm. I did. I wasn't for certain, so I didn't give them a definite. I was like, you know, let me kind of see where my options are and get back to you within a week or so. Right. And um, within that time, they had given it to the other um, apprentice who was work. Both of us were seniors, and yeah. they gave it to the other guy because they're like this. Me, he, he might leave, he might get opportunity and bounce, as opposed to this guy, he's kind of just chilling in KC, right. like he don't really have any big aspirations. And I found out they gave it to him, I was like, damn, okay, y'all didn't even give me a chance to kind of let you, you know, let you know what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. But um, from that moment, I was like, okay, I got a bet on me. And I yeah. just started hauling ass with the camera, with the videos, with the beats, with mm -hmm. the commercials, everything. Like, you gonna see me in every corner of the city. Yeah. So, um, long story short, there is a there is a W with every L that comes, you know, and sometimes you might be kind of hurt or disturbed by losing an opportunity or losing the comfort of a job, but there's also a blessing, and you can kind of go harder at what you do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, my next question is: the KC community has really welcomed you um, with open arms and shown you a lot of love as far as like the creative culture goes. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. What What do you What do you see in Kansas City as far as like potential? Um, some things we could do better and you know i want to kind of take this time to just really show some some love to the creative culture here in town for what i've seen here compared to other towns that have creative mm -hmm. uh, community i don't see that the community itself is actually putting things there for the creative community to prosper with for instance a lot of the space within the crossroads mm -hmm. people to create with you have this you have a you have a sim uh, simplistic aesthetic that's basically throughout the whole space. It's the same aesthetic. It is. You go to different towns, you see a lot of different colors. Right. That create that's allowing the creators to really work with different things. Here, you have to search. You have to work hard to find those one or two spots that actually bring that vibe that you're looking for to life. Straight versus up. Versus having to work with dark browns, dark reds, things like that. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole nother situation, conversation. But like. As far as the creative community here, very open when I started. Now, key word is when I started three years ago, mm -hmm. it was very open. There was a lot of meetups going on. Yeah, it was, was a lot a of lot of KC creative things going on. There's a lot of nothing on them, but there was a lot of things being held by them to help the creative community. Right. That helped me up a, a crap ton. That put me in a position to know a lot of different things in studio work, nat natural light, Working with different people at four or five, you know, all at the same time, but within a 20 minute period, getting a few shots here and there, it just made me be on the spot, yes. you know, really put myself to the challenge. Yeah. And you're naturally um, effortless and when it comes to networking and meeting people. Where does that come from? Like partying. Partying. Back in the day. Did you, um, all did you twerk fest, all the everything? Boy, stories. All, <laughs> the, fest, all, the, all, the, all the Orlando's, y'all know about Orlando. If, don't lie. <laughs> I know all of y'all that graduated in 2010, 11, 12, 13, and 14. I graduated 13. I wasn't in there. Y'all was y'all was all at Orlando. Y'all was all at Twerfe. Y'all was all at Asher. Y'all was, was at Project Lane. Y'all yeah. was all there. Granada. So everything. Don't cap <laughs> to my rap, Jack. I know y'all know. Oh, Cause I was there with the, with the whistle getting it. <laughs> I remember that tall dude with the whistle. Y'all know, y'all y'all remember I was there with the whistle. And I was cutting up. Yeah. Cutting up. Yeah. <laughs> I remember like one time, and this is when I was still kind of getting to know you. I just start like I think um, left right by YG's playing. She made that ass go yeah. left, left right, and I'm like, all I hear is the whistle to the beat. Like I'm like, is that the song or is that somebody in here? And I look around, all I see is you just <laughs> blowing the whistle. I'm like. From that moment, I was like, "That's my guy." Was there some people behind me? Um, I don't recall. Oh, I, I think probably had, was lit. Probably had a, a chick with you or something. No, she didn't. was. He said, "No, I didn't." <laughs> did you um? Did you grow up shy at all, or like you just always naturally been open to meeting people and just talking? So as a child, I was antisocial. I did not like people. I did not like people. I did not know. 
Why is that? My this mom, is natural. I don't know. My mom told me when I was a, a child, kid would come up to me and say, what's your name? And I answer and say, what's it to you? <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of child is that? I don't know. That's a messed up <laughs> <laughs> What's it to you? Oh, what's man. What's it to you? Oh, well. Like, my bad. Wow. I'm just trying to so, play Legos with you. Right. So, I was one of those kids that was just like, I wasn't really trying to socialize with everybody. Mm -hmm. I got bullied a lot. I got mm. teased a lot. I was really the outsider in school. I didn't really become, I wasn't really fully with myself and understanding of myself. Right. And knowing that I am blunt, I'm straightforward until after the fact. So when did you, um, first how did you deal with that? Cause I know bullying is a, is a uh, touchy topic that- you Dancing. Know, dancing. Music. Me making me making burnt CDs about on on songs like I made CDs on um, with burnt songs on there. You know, shout out to LimeWire and Rhapsody. Y Boy, I, I, I really, tell you, I really should have got arrested back in the day because I was streaming at least and downloading at least five hundred songs a night. I was easy on LimeWire. Easy, they, nobody knew about LimeWire, but like. If she don't know what line wire is, she's too young for you. <laughs> Point blank, period. Line wire was it, boy? But I would make CDs about how I felt. You know, I would have thirteen songs that would just go in order, particular, particular based on mm -hmm. you know what I was feeling at that time. Okay. Or I would make songs, you know, CDs that I would just listen to in the house, just come back and listen to on the computer while playing solitaire. That that was for me. That was my vibe. Yeah. Me writing poems out. Me writing the lyrics out to songs. That's how I escaped all that stuff going on. That's I cool. love that. So, so you've been um, you've been creating a long time. It seems like. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. 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 What? <laughs> well, I don't think. Have you um, thought about doing any video work, or have you done any video work? Um. I can see you doing being a fire like creative director. I would definitely much more be on the directing side of things versus the recording side of things. I think I know as far as like the, the, the shot and getting a different shot versus where you was initially thinking mm -hmm. may be at a, you know, okay, what if you went like down here and kind of just pan yeah, down exactly. versus going straight into it. Exactly. While also having a straight in shot too, you know, just having, I think that itself is much more appealing to me than shooting. Than shooting is, yeah. Because doing do that. photography, that's my, that's my, that's where I want to continue at. For sure. But if I see that, you know, an opportunity with creative direction comes up, then by all means, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. What are some of your, what's your big vision? Like, what's a, a big goal of yours as far as your craft goes? I mean, with all this stuff when going on, I'd be trying to get on to every show. I'd be working, trying to work at the Sprint Center by now. Yeah. I'm trying to do shows. Like, my, that was my goal is to, Concerts. you know, yeah. Like, that was the adrenaline that I just couldn't find doing nothing else. That's real. That's those those some of your um, concert photos are just like wow. I mean, just talking about it give me chills because I get so excited. This the idea of having three songs. You got three, the first three songs of the whole show to get those shots, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get those, and you don't get those, that's and why the first three songs. That's the only song they allow you up front. Ah, uh, you only get the first. Some artists. Like uh, Flock for Fly Over last year, particular, particularly uh, Nicki Min, uh, Cardi, B, Cardi B, she couldn't, uh, she wouldn't allow anybody up front. So we had to be in the, in the corner of the uh, front lawn, uh -huh. the amphitheater. Yep, at the amphitheater. So, you know, at the time I didn't have a lawn. I had my 7300 little aperture, you know, variable aperture lens. It was just a boo boo lens, but got yeah. the job done. So those type of situations you kind of have to make shift for it but right. besides that you may only get two songs up front one song up front but it's usually you gotta max, capitalize right and you have to make the most of it yeah it's always it's just the idea of having to adjust on the fly knowing anticipating what they might do next mm -hmm. you know if, if the artist is sitting down and you know you're gonna get a lot of still shots from that one space if somebody's up Somebody, uh, I can go like this, but then I can also squat back down and get back up. If the stage is right here uh -huh. and they're up this, I can squat back down and step back and get a straight shot right. because of my height. Because your height. Most Let's people go. that are shorter, they kind of struggle. Yeah. They kind of, they oh, kind of, and they got to be behind like or competing with you. But also with concerts, it's like if somebody is like the crowd, 
they always hate me. Yeah. I'm always in front. I'm like, hey, Sorry. y'all not finna be able to see nothing. <laughs> Especially because I'm stuck here. Right. So, Sorry. Um, but, I mean, y'all get to be here after I leave. So it's good. Shit, real. <laughs> Who are some, uh, some of the people you're striving to work with or... For man, my main but my main goal as far as to as far as at the end of the day is to do something with like lyrical lemonade. The fact that they have a lot of art. So Jake Jake with Project Lang is I think he's interning with them. Yeah, he did. he's interning with them or we're I think doing something with them as far as writing and uh, journalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, but excuse me, but like doing for like me doing like photojournalism. Dope. Dang, again. Oh. Good. Um, <laughs> but like also shooting all the artists in different forms whether it's in their studio or it's just um, aesthetic shots of them it might be content for their cover work okay. it might be for events or shows it might be a festival anything going on I want to be there to shoot it mm-hmm. to create that to yeah. bring that that, 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 that idea of what that time is to life so they can see and kind of reflect back on it yeah. So, my goal with the photos is like everything's digital, but you don't really see too many prints of just everything that's going on. I want to have lookbooks of just different days, like yeah, the day in the life. This is what it was day day to day to the, from sun sunrise to sunset. to sunset. That's super dope. Even nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. Even nighttime. I might have to set something up with you that, as far as that goes like if somebody want to go on a road trip I will take photos of the whole road trip yeah up there to the, going there there and coming, coming back. back yeah so just, I'm actually uh, since you said that I'm actually planning one it's going to be a um, a blackout block party and what we're going to do is we're going to have a celebration for the lives lost um, to police brutality yeah. and uh, the whole scope is just to um, I want everybody to come in there all black bring any signs you might have etc but we plan on hitting different cities like across the country, okay. packing up the NSUV and just hitting the road, bro, and just celebrating these lives through music. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll have a, have a moment of silence, you know, for the lives lost. But then after that, we're just going to jam, bro. You know? Just get it, get it cracking. We're going to start here in KC right down the street, actually. And I'm going to make sure you're there. I, got I will it. come and pick you up if I have to. I got an idea. Holla at me. Um, so... What if you, how how open would you be to a group of say six seven dancers that are also black mm-hmm. to be there with the all black to actually you know say there's a there's a particular so what I'm saying is okay to dance obviously there, okay but there's a particular song that was put out by Janelle Monae called Hell You Tom About Hell You Tom About but the name in the and like you would hear is say say their name say his name say her oh, name. Oh, so it's new. Yeah. Okay. And it just came. I think it came out like a couple weeks ago. Okay. Like maybe a month ago. And she puts the names there. People in there like um, Michael Brown, Trayvon mm-hmm. Martin, uh, Sean Perry. Or, Bro, the list is so yeah. long. This, this, it's just. This. I mean, the song is six minutes long. So I think like, and we did a video to it. So that's coming out soon. Shout out to Keen No Kel for making that. And Shout everybody that was Nokel. in there. I actually just followed him on Instagram recently. Because uh, this is going to be so huge. I'm just waiting on him to get it done. Take your time, no breath. Because, you know, it's going to be fire and fly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But I think that. I would that, definitely be open to that. I think that itself, because it brings a lot more of the culture. And you get to see that and feel it, not just within the music, but within the dancing. Within the and dance the, because it's so much art being created at that point in time. And I feel like people kind of lose that that uh, that idea of yeah, this is personal. At the end, at the end of the day, it's still personal. So to feel that person hurt or that pain them through their emotions, through, emotions, through the dance, through movements, to a song that actually says their name, so you hear it, see it, and feel it, it's a whole different experience, I think. So that would be like should, you guys should come out definitely. Yeah. Um, the official date is I think it's gonna be. We have the the thirteenth. The thirteenth. We're gonna be having it. I'm sorry. I actually think it's the twelfth. July twelfth. This is why she's the manager, and I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> July twelfth, man. We're gonna have it in the park right down here by the plaza. And, oh uh, yeah. Yeah. We're actually gonna be doing some work on it today, as far as like promo and t-shirts and all that good stuff, because 
it's a it's a tough time for African Americans here, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just been kind of hard to kind of sit back and watch what yeah. what's taking place. You know, sometimes we just feel helpless. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, another one. We have the protests, we have all the um, the Instagram, the blackout, all that good stuff. But then a couple of days later, we find out someone someone yeah. just got hung. Right. You know, we found out a c- police just killed another young black man. And it's it's been a very challenging, you mm-hmm. know month this whole covid uh, black lives matter these times have been very um challenging challenging but also motivating yeah. for me at least because exactly. i know there's still work that needs to be done and me i'm already i'm fired up as they come so you give me more gasoline you better believe like shit's just gonna keep getting more more flames more volcano like i'm i'm passionate about this stuff bro yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying it's i feel like it just, uh, you see, people are actually understanding, taking the time to educate themselves on a lot more things. Like, I've had, I've had so many people ask me in the past couple of days, am I voting? And I say, yeah, you know, I am, but I'm also voting in the next two years for the other two branches that people right. have forgot about, but then they brought back to life recently. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot more things on, on social media for Breonna Taylor. It's not dying off. Things that you would expect to die off after a couple of days just isn't anymore. Right. You know, and I feel like that itself and that dynamic, there's a lot of other things going on in the world that's shifting. Even with the state, I don't know if you saw what's going on with Mississippi. Mm Mm-mm. There's a lot of players on the football team on Mississippi State that won't play because they have the Confederate flag in their state flag. And I didn't even know that they had it in their state flag until I literally Googled it and I was like, oh, wow, it's, it's, right. it's right there in the corner. That's crazy. So, Nobody even, I didn't know that. Right. Yeah. I didn't know that until, I mean, like I said, Twitter. Yeah. One hell of a news, Twitter, man. man. Twitter, I know you was Twitter a Twitter. better than CNN. You was, was a Twitter, Twitter king back in, in our Johnson County days. Oh, boy. <laughs> Nobody knows about the I was talking. Reckless. Talking reckless. I think if a lot of the stuff that I was talking about then, if I talked about it now, people are so sensitive to it. So yeah. It would just be like, it would be backlash. Where do you think, um, as far as like the culture and society goes, what can we do like on the surface level to make change, inspire people, um, you know, bring hope, I guess you could say. I, think I know for me personally, like, it's going to be through this tour. Like, I'm planning on connecting with a lot of people, um, hugging, hugging those that's hurting. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, that dude that did the free hugs movement back yeah. in 2015. That's essentially, I'm going to be doing my own form of that. Yeah. Um, what are some ways that you think that the people listening can get involved? I think just uh, being more, being so open-minded, you're uncomfortable. Mm. Let's talk about it. I think... Some people are open-minded to an extent. You're only open-minded to what you want to be open to. Mm. See what I'm saying? Because you're still closed-minded even though you're trying to be open-minded. You're trying. That's good. You have your own opinion, but you're open-minded. That's a conflict of interest. Right. But if you're open-minded with a full open mind to the point where you're uncomfortable about talking th- about things to yeah. other people, that's how you grow. Straight up. I don't see that happening that's how you grow. as much as people claim on socials. Oh, I, you know, I may be white, so I don't understand, but I stand. Do you really stand? Do you really stand? Do you really understand? Mm. Are you just overstanding your stance? You see what I'm saying? That's deep. That's <laughs> good. That's good. Make sure y'all taking notes because I told you we're dropping right. gems, man. This is just that grown folk talk. Uh, if you're getting uncomfortable now, log off because I don't give a damn. I just feel like, you know... It happened to me the other day at the Fontaine. Let's talk about it. I went up there to shoot with Angel. No, or somebody else. Was back. So, oh, okay. So I took this. I, I went up there three weeks ago mm-hmm. with. I'm not gonna say names. With about three to four Caucasian people, right? It was a Wednesday afternoon. I had no problems going up, right? There was a. a Indian, about middle Middle Eastern guy working the desk. He let me go up. He actually let me buy a drink at the front. I didn't know where it was, so clearly I wasn't a guest there. Mm-hmm. I went up to the pool, just fine. 
left. I thought, okay, I want to shoot here again. So I was going there with Angel. We went up there uh, two weeks ago, and it was packed. So I didn't want to shoot there because it was too many people. Mm -hmm. That's messed up background. We go up there again. It's past Friday, which is Juneteenth. There was a Caucasian lady working, and there was a black lady at the right by the elevator. I go up, go to the elevator, click on six or seven, whatever, and she's like, "Excuse me, uh, do you know where you're going?" So she stops me, obviously, and then say, "Yeah, I'm going to the pool." Well, do you stay here? At first, I wanted to say, "Why does that matter? And who are you?" I just, you know, I don't think like that at the time of things going. So I said. Yeah, I do. And then she asked, oh, well, where, where's your room? So now I'm getting interrogated. And it felt just like how it felt if it was like a cop doing it. Right. Some people don't have that situation happen to them. Straight and up. It, and that's, that's, that's very valid. And at that point of that happening, they basically said I wasn't allowed to go up to the pool. And I just told them, well, I was just up there. And I took photos up there, so I don't see what the problem is. I had a friend on Instagram that was just up there the day that, before. That doesn't stay there. That doesn't stay there. And I asked her, Caucasian lady, I asked her, hey, how did you get up to the Fontaine? Oh, I just went into the elevator and clicked seven. Oh. Well, I just did that and I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. So. Damn. That's profound. Having that happen. In this time of the, in this time, right in my face like that, and I've been there multiple times, but for that to happen again, just put a bad, like you know, what I'm saying, put it put a bad taste in my mouth, but it also made it made me realize, okay, this is I, it's real, like it's ha- it's going on. Right. You wouldn't think it gonna happen to you until it happened to you. That's facts. And then you, and then you, and then you, then you think it's real, like this is not real. I know I didn't, didn't just happen to me. Why, how does this, how does this just, why can't I go up there? Why yeah. can't I go? I see people up there. I was just up there. You was just up there. And you just had a friend that went up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, that threw me off. Again, it's kind of like, uh, you don't really understand until rules and regulations that usually aren't enforced on people end up being enforced on you. Mm. Then you start seeing really what it is. Right. Imagine going to a restaurant that you've been to thousands of times for them to tell you you can't be there. Just because. Just because. Off the rip. No reason. No, no. Well, I'm sorry. We just can't um, allow you in. Why? We're at 50%. You can clearly see it's 20% and nobody's in there. Right. But they just won't let you in. I'm going to just write you a bad review. I'll take at my the money elsewhere. Of, at the end of the day. Yeah, it's, I, don't it's even, just, I don't even. Like, there ain't no discussion. Ain't, but at the end of the day. Get, you're not going to get principle. hostile me. Right, you right. Know? It's just the fact that it's just still the principle that, well, why can't I come in there? Right. I was just in here. I'm a I'm a loyal customer to you guys. I'm trying to give you my Straight up. money. Your hard earned money. Right. But you won't let me in because of what? So it sounds like this did happen to you recently. No, or that is an example. To me, okay. But it's just the fire from the same thing as the Fontaine that I'm putting in towards that. Right. Because you know it could happen. It has happened at has different happened. places. Going somewhere that I'm. Don't I know I don't belong, and I know that if I act like or I look or feel like I don't belong, then they'll ask me to leave. Mm-hmm. You ask somebody else that's not of color, that sometimes doesn't happen to them. More times than not. Than More better. times than not, yeah. because they would just assume, oh, they belong here. But you, you don't, you, you with them? Nah, so where, where you stay at? Where you from? Right. Damn. <laughs> You don't look familiar, uh, you know? Yeah, you don't look familiar, quote-unquote. All right. Head ass. So, yeah, there's things like that that I see, you know. It's until, happening every day. Until, until that happens to people that's never had that happen to them, they won't understand. And it happens to them on at the most times that they just won't, ex- like, you just don't expect it, mm-hmm. you know? I think now is the time, it's an important time for us to be stronger than ever and to... Um, be heard and seen more than ever. Yeah. Um, Cause cops, racist people, all the nays, all the ops, man, they gonna stay mad. You know now. what I'm saying? But we won't ever stop being great. That's my that's my two cents about mm-hmm. it. You know, and that's just what it is. 
Now I sit on a on a on a teeter totter because I have a it's it's a sticky situation. Mm-hmm. A good friend of mine, she, her parents actually worked for KCP. Okay. I'm not gonna say her name because that's obviously when that's a, on the bus. Right. So it's kind of hard for her because it's like she has to deal with you know the idea the, like uh, like her parents aren't bad cops. Right. Those are actually good decent cops those are the ones and there's plenty of them plenty of those cops yeah. that actually do the right thing that's pushing for the right justice you know right but it's like she gives me insight on the eye like like blue flu and what that is like i don't know if you know what that is what is that it's because all like cops are like quitting their jobs and stuff and soon like not soon but just like calling in and not be going into work mm. because they can't get away with things like they used to like she was telling me a friend of her a family friend just got sent to prison for uh, murder, but it was like a, at that point in time, it was a justified because somebody was holding that somebody else to the head with a gun and pointed mm-hmm. it at them, so he shot them. But because he killed that person with the gun, I was seen as murder, so now he's in prison. So Interesting. Like, right. So a lot of things, because of the protest, yes, things are bringing back to light, but things that were justified at one point like that, are now getting switched around, switched around. in the per- in the in the people's favor because the people's favor is what's been trying to be heard now. Right. So For so long. Right. So it's kind of like, yes, there's a lot of good going on, but remember too, what if these police officers were teachers? They're still people. Mm-hmm. You know. So yes, it's fuck the police. It's the system. Can't get mad. Yes, there's some messed up cops. But there's also some good teachers. Yes. As well as, well as there are some, ma- some bad trash teachers. Right. Some teachers don't care. They're not, they don't care about what they're teaching their students. Mm-hmm. They're just throwing whatever at them. Like cops. Right. There's some good teachers that's actually putting the good word out to these kids. They're actually being there for them. They're actually doing the right thing mm-hmm. for them. You know, if things don't look right, they're probably going to report it. Or they're probably going to stand their ground. For that, because sure that's what they believe in. Right. I've seen a lot of good cops, but those are the ones being not heard because there's so many bad ones on, you know, being seen. That's what they're putting out. I got yeah. a lot of other yeah. ideas within other stuff. That's Let another me, interview. That's a whole <laughs> other story. I don't want to get caught up, you yeah. know. But it's it's deep, man, and we could we could go all day about it. But uh, I guess kind of a conclusion, man. What's what's next for you, bro? What's your what are you working on? What can we expect from you within the rest of 2020? Oh, I got one more follow-up question. After. What can you expect from me? Man, I don't even know what to expect. <laughs> um, I got a lot of life-changing things coming up in August. Mm-hmm. Um, things that have held me back. Uh, decision that were made years ago. Yeah. yeah. Those things are finally getting wiped away. Good. So I can actually be on a, uh, I see more light at the end of the tunnel there as days come. Yeah, so, I love hearing that. Uh, freedom will finally be, for me at least, my my own personal freedom will be here. So, yeah, oh, yeah. I plan on, um, my goal, man, within the next year is to be working at an airline company. Why airline? So... I'm all about jobs with some sort of perks. I used to work at shoe stores. You got shoes for me. Mm, yeah. And I worked at Best Buy, and you got the discount for the, for the, for the uh, devices. Yep. But now when it comes to this, you're gonna travel. photography, I want to have some sort of help with the travel. That's a good idea. Versus having to try to find a job that allows me to travel because that's just a perk of it. Mm-hmm. But why not a job that does that? Right. That's clever. You know? Yeah. If I wanna if there's a show going on in New York and I wanna make it and I already got the, the, the go ahead approval for it, then I can just fly there. Not even have to pay for it. Right. Yeah. Dallas is an hour and a half flight. I take that. Straight up. If there's a show in Dallas and Houston, I can fly both ways. Yeah. That's easy. I, that's, so me looking at like that. And then at the same time, you don't have to live in Dallas or wherever to at a at a at a at a, at a airport to work there you can live wherever and just fly in mm-hmm. and then when you're done just fly back out right so that's that's what i see it as 
So, Casey will always be home, but I may not always be here. So, that's that's, that's, that's what I want. I'm probably not going to move out from KC. I don't, I don't say that. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to really keep this. I'm not going to wood, but, you know, if that happens, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're in the middle of the mat. So everybody got to. That is very true. KC will always be home base. Yeah. You know, but I'm planning on multiple residencies. Yeah. Talk about that all the time. So Now, you know, best push come to, sir, push come to shove. If I'm working for the airlines, I'm going to have a crash pad in Charlotte, have a crash pad in Houston, have a crash pad in Milwaukee. Uh -huh. I'm, trying uh, to, I'm trying to be bouncing. Hey, Kev, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be in KC next week, but I'll be, I'll be home maybe the 6th to like the 8th, maybe the 9th. Bullshit. We'll see. <laughs> I might fly out to Sh Charlotte, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Holler at me then. You know? Yeah. <laughs> But no, <coughs> we'll see. Yeah. So two um, two final questions. You mentioned um, earlier, what was your initial raise when you were doing photography? Fifty dollars an hour. And what are they now? Two hundred. You hear that? Stay motivated. Keep keep working. Up your craft. Up your prices. Don't be afraid to charge what you're worth. And my last question is, what's the biggest lesson 2020 has taught you thus far? It's a deep one. It taught a lot of lessons. Stay diligent. Mm. Explain. Um, there's been times where I felt like I was doing the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. Um, I still do at times. Um, I have thought that, you know, what if I stopped and just did something else? So, but the other thing after that is like, well, if I stop now, it's going to be twice as hard to find something because I'm already three years deep. Wherever I'm at because I've been going, mm -hmm. I got to keep going because I'm obviously closer to something. You got to keep going. Stop. Right. Yeah. Um, I also want to tell people is like, don't get stuck shooting the same thing. If you shoot one person one place, dress them up something different in a whole nother color. That changes your mind and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? If you shoot at a white wall all the time, nothing against people that shoot with white backdrops, but to kind of grow within the different color schemes, you might want to shoot between a, a green backdrop and bring that same color but flip it. You know, all white with a green, but then all green to white. It just changes your eye and how you edit and how you adjust those colors and how you bring those things out. Yeah, so, stay innovative. Stay, you know, growing and learning about your crafts. Yeah. You know? um, I will also... I will also say too, a place that's taught me a lot was rent glass. I've rented from there multiple times. I rented so many lenses. Every lens. Mm -hmm. Every lens you could think of. I rented every single lens. That will help you out with the with, with learning apertures and learning what that gives your camera and what, what benefits to it. You know, if you're shooting in low light, having a lower aperture is always gonna be best. Yeah. But you would never know that until you shoot with a 1.4 versus a 3.5 to 5.6. Big difference. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. So, but it also depends on too the camera. You can rent you rent different cameras out that have a higher megapixel count versus your 18. You can get a 26. You can see what benefit that gives you. Mm-hmm. You'll see. Yeah. So. I love hearing that. Yeah. Well, you got any um? Oh yeah. Also. I'm thinking about, uh, you know, doing lessons for, for, for entry-level photographers, people that want to get started. So if you do want to up your knowledge within the camera and the lens and, cool. and how those two things kind of work together, dependently on each other, depending on what you're shooting lighting-wise, let me know. Let's go. I can help you. Get in contact with my man. Where can they find you on the socials, my man? Kenny did that. Yes. On Instagram. Kenny did that. On Twitter. Uh-huh. You can also hit me up on Stretch, which is my personal page. I don't care for that. But you can hit me up on that, too, because if you know, I might not see the other one. It's Stretch, S-T-R-E-T-T-C-H-15. That's my uh, uh, Snapchat, too. You can hit me up on that, too. That's the other way to get a hold of me. And then you can also contact me on Facebook, which is Kenny Did That. There's a lot of Kenny Did That. Or Kenny Did That <laughs> at gmail.com. Uh huh. Website coming soon. Website coming soon. Holla at your boy. To a theater near you. Yeah, yeah. 
My man, Kenny. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having you, bro. Well, get in contact with my man for photo shoots. Um, if yes. you want to freestyle dance sometime with him, all that good stuff. If you are, last thing, if you are having a girls' <laughs> night out, hit me up. If you having a guys' night out, hit me up. If you have a bachelor party, bachelorette party, a birthday party, Quinceanera. Quinceanera, birthday, uh, I said baby shower. Uh, happy uh, hour. Happy hour, unhappy hour. Album release party. Album release party. It could be a song release party. It could be your Girls Gone Wild party. Right, that too. Your Airbnb <laughs> party, your road trip, your flight out of town, Concert. whatever. Hit me up. Yeah. I will be that guy. Yes. I want to work. I'll let you, boy. I love it, man. Stay hungry. Uh, this has been another episode of The Passionate Creatives. I'm your host, 6'5", and as always, 